I saw a question posed on my channel. How do you make the autoplay function work with all of the other chord extensions you've got? All your sevens, nines and elevens. It doesn't seem to work. Well, there is a workaround and I'll show you that. Here I am then with the autoplay function on the Fender Rhodes, the electric piano. And as you can see, I've got my array of chords here. Let's say, however, I want to change this chord instead of C. Maybe I want to change that into something else. So if I go to edit chords in the main menu, I can then click on a chord. But nothing's working. If I switch autoplay off, however, it's actually put those extensions in. This is called C11, which is kind of the same as C7 uh, sus4 or uh, B flat chord with a C in the bass. G minor 7 with a C in the bass. There's quite a lot of the theory tied up in here, but you don't need to know it so much. If you find a chord that you like the sound of, really, that's the main thing. So how are we going to put this in the sort of autoplay function? Well, what I would do is I would recommend recording just the chord first. something like that. Then from bar three, where I came to a stop there, set the autoplay function working. Let's see which one we like the best. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I'm gonna record that one. Okay, so a bit of that. Now I'm gonna go back to the main window and compare the two things. Now, helpfully, when you press edit on a particular section, not only does it show you the bit that you've just recorded, it'll actually show you the entire track. This is where you can just start dragging some of these notes to meet the other ones. So for example, I could uh, say, for example, take these, move them up um, to, ma to match the chord that I had before. Uh, let's have a look at this one, maybe. So that was the autoplay function that I had when I'd actually put the chords in beforehand. So if we listen to the two sections, got bars one and two, which are what I put in with the chord, and then the autoplay function from bar three onwards, and I just tweaked the notes to fit. And there you have it. Now, if you want to put other extensions in, like these other chords, these sort of, um, these ones here, we could even just copy those over, or I could just put a little faint smattering of these notes, maybe somewhere along the line. So, you can do it that way. So that's one way of doing it. You just take that chord symbol, the, the first one, the first two bars there, and just replicate it in bars three to five, or however much you've got there, by just sort of playing with those notes. And you can see on the graphical representation how to do that. Now, if we just look at some of the other chords here, for example, if I could go to edit chords again, you have to make sure that you also tap the right chord to edit. I've not got C13, which means there's an A in that chord as well. I've actually added another note. C13 is C7 chord, which is C, E, G, B flat. And then the 13th is the A above that, but you can also have lots of stuff in between. You can have the 9th, uh, the sharpened 11th. There's an awful lot that you can do with this. So if I just go back to the, just the chord autoplay off, Got that's a real modern harmony, that sort of dissonance there. So if I record from bar six, uh, just with this. Uh -huh. 
there we go I'm just going to make my section a little bit longer overall so that we can sort of play with the autoplay on that so from bar eight I'm actually going to set the autoplay let's see what happens if I try autoplay number four <laughs> So going back to my main window, it should be four sections now. I've got my C11 on the left and then my C13 on the right here. So once again, go into edit mode. So that's what I've got. You can see the A and the B flat together here. So it's quite dissonant. You don't need to have that, but the B flat and the A should be there if indeed it is a C13 chord. So I've got an E, a G, and a C. Hmm. Well, if I make the... If I turn those... Let's take that one away. If I take the G and make it an A instead, and put the C to a B flat, but I'm going to put it the other way, but down the bottom there. Let's see what happens if I do that now. There you go. Now, you don't have to have the chord that's exactly the same all the way through. We could maybe tweak one of the, one or two of the notes there just to fit. Uh, let's... Um... Something like that. So the chord needn't just sort of wander just aimlessly it could have counter lines going on in the in the sort of in between all of those other notes so that is really the option here is just to now the reason why you can't get all of these things to autoplay is because there are so many more combinations than you would get with a, a major or minor chord so it's understandable that they're not there but in order to make something of those chord extensions in autoplay really this is the way to do it not only that at the same time you're sort of giving yourself the education of how those chords work so actually it's a really good thing to be able to tweak these chords especially on a platform like this because this where you're dragging your notes around is really the same as any other digital audio workstation that you may work on so another plus point for GarageBand I think <laughs>